wanted to be done last year. But uh, yeah, then we had a son, and, and, and then that happened, and he uh, never thought a kid could live up to their name. We named him Wilder. Uh, <laughs> you were asking for that. Too. Yeah, yeah. Howdy, folks. Brian Cusco here at the Red Line Report, and we're going to have my buddy Will Nace on today. And Will has been going through quite the endeavor. We're going to talk with him about it, and uh, he's been taking a little break from YouTube for a bit. And he's back on now, but uh, yeah, we're just going to see what's been going on with Will and find out a little bit more about what's going on with that. So you're watching the Red Line Report. You had a camera person? I had a camera person for a little while, but now he's uh, he's got his own venomous and his own life, so he actually works for Safe Light Auto Glass. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I can't complain. They pay him more than I could. Uh, gotcha. You could probably, well, that's a, that's a bummer because you could probably... I'm not saying you could compete with the pay, but I would hope, hopefully he was having more fun with you. Yeah, yeah. But he got his own venomous hours and everything like that, so he's not, he wasn't the best of camera guys, so I kind of was just asking him to do it for me. Oh, it was more about getting his hours in. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how does that work, by the way? You, you have to get a certain amount of hours to... Uh, yeah, you have to have 1,000 hours per venomous family to be able to own them in Florida. Okay. So this way, it, like by Pier Day, for example, you have to have a thousand hours working with them, documented when you send in your hours with your permit, showing that hey, you know, I put in the time to be able to work with these animals. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. And you have to do that for each family. So. Each family. So Alapidae, same thing for all the cobras and everything like that. You have to have a thousand hours documented working with them, and it goes on. Is that just Florida? Is that yeah. that's just Florida? That's okay. just Florida. Texas, you can go to Walmart, buy a hunting permit, and you can have whatever the heck you want. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. I feel like the Florida approach is a little more reasonable. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> you have to learn. It's over a year of experience. You can only do, just like a, a normal business, you can only do eight hours a day for five days a week. Like, you can't do over, over that. So mine, like, because I had such a big collection, they called me questioning it because they were like, you know, it says here you guys were feeding for two days straight. How How is that possible? I was like, I have a very large collection. I have over 200 venomous snakes. So it's easily done for, you know, feeding for two days. Like, because you have to defrost, you have to dry off the rats if they're wet or whatever. And then, you know, cages, I have multiple cages, I have multiple snakes in. So you got to separate out those snakes. You got to feed those snakes. You got to wait till they're done eating, put them back. Like, it takes time. So, yeah, it was it was fun when they called me for, for his permits. How does that work for the multiple animals in, in cages? Is there a purpose there? Uh, just pairs. So, like, I have trios, like, of uh, the Mexican West Coast rattlesnakes. So I have a trio in a six-foot vision cage. Um, you know, and the male, I love him to death, but he will eat very fast and then go and eat the females because they're just slower eaters. So, like, I have the, the timber rattlesnake. Same thing. I have two in one cage and the one female she'll eat much faster than the other one and then she'll go and eat her rat and then end up regurging a day later because she ate too much food but she'll still do it every time so i have to separate them out so they don't do that until they're done eating then put them back and rattlesnakes are fairly communal species as far as like snakes go right yeah Yeah. right they'll live in little dens and stuff together no problem i mean even the eastern diamondback rattlesnakes same thing they'll live they'll have Um, There's been documented cases of like 10 or 15 in a gopher tortoise hole. So, but the same thing with like the the timbers or cambric rattlesnakes, there'll be multiple ones and under like rock ledges, like McCurley's told me he's found, you know, I think uh, one time he said he found like 20 in a little den once. And I was like, that's crazy. Because it's a lot of snakes, especially ones that could kill you with a bite. (laughs) Yeah, that is crazy. How how has it been um, keeping the fly? I know you guys are the front line of legislation it seems. I mean. Yeah. Um, it's been difficult. Um, I've kind of, let's say, ghosted the last maybe year now. Um, I haven't really barely posted anything the last four months. I just finally posted a YouTube video again um, just because there's been so much going on behind the scenes, not only with building the zoo that I am building, but um, just, yeah, with all the stuff, all the changes in Florida. You know, last year there was that... Um, thought was it called operation viper that happened that a lot of people including myself unfortunately got involved in even if we didn't do anything um but because you know i was on the front line for us art florida always saying things promoting it i was attacked with that whole ongoing investigation crap that was involved so it was was a lot of stuff that 
can't really get into right now. But um, yeah, it was just it was a lot of pressure from the state that you know I kind of was like, all right, I need to slow down a little bit, and not post as much, kind of keep my mouth shut, and then hopefully everything kind of smooths over, which it did. So you know that's why I'm kind of trying to get back into it and everything like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's tough, man. That's, that's rough, man. That's yeah. cool you're building a zoo. Yeah. Um, it's it's a lot of work and a lot of money because I'm doing everything myself. So there's that. Um, How old are your kids? Uh, my daughter's five. My son is 16 months now. So he's not helping just quite yet. She has her own tool drawer with tools and everything. Yes. She, she loves to help me build everything. So just like your kids like to be involved with everything, so do mine. Um, but, yeah, so it's... Like, I just got done um, building a temporary cage for our Asian water monitor that, you know, we got from Kevin. Uh, he was actually at my buddy Brian's house uh, for the last two years because when we moved into our new place, um, you know, he was in a smaller cage, but he was, oh, and usually I let him walk around unless I was filming, and then he was just trying to constantly get out when I was in there filming, making a lot of noise, so he went to my buddy's house for a couple of years until I got done with his cage, um, and I didn't get quite done with his main cage yet so i build him like a little temporary one for now it's not little it's still pretty big um but like so i'm happy to have him back home you know and everybody like i started posting like oh puppy's home puppy's home everybody's like what the heck is puppy <laughs> and i'm like i'm like oh only the original youtube guys are like will know who puppy is and then um you know i started seeing all the comments everybody's like oh my god i'm so excited and everybody else like who the heck is puppy so i finally like posted a reel on Instagram and everybody's like so excited he's back home but yeah he's an eight foot Asian water monitor um, the weekend before that uh, we got done with our capybara enclosure uh, which we built um, we gave her like a big 700 gallon swimming pool um, you know I still have little things to tweak here and there add the waterfall for her or for him and, and things like that but yeah it's it's a lot of work yeah you're doing it all yourself yeah um, the capybara enclosure we actually had uh, we have McCarthy's Wildlife Sanctuary that's right around the corner from us. Um, you know, you may have heard of them, may have not. Uh, Mark McCarthy, he's huge in a lot of rattlesnakes and stuff like that, too. Um, but they have all types of animals. They actually sent over their, one of their maintenance guys to come help us build the capybara enclosure. You know, they were paying for him to be there and help us, which is really cool. That helped out a lot. Um, and then I have, you know, friends that help me occasionally when they can. But, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, it's me there every day. Summer's got the kids. I'm outside building. Yeah, it's 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 fun, and it's hot. It's very hot. For yeah, us. yeah, no doubt, <laughs> dude. So, is it gonna be? Is it like a private zoo? Or is it gonna be um, no, we want to eventually do uh, private tours. Um, when we get to that, we still have to get our USDA license for that, which you know, in turn, is another process. You know, we have to have certain food requirements, which we meet all those requirements. But like, for example, one of the things is. Um, all the food and everything has to be in like its own contained area so basically like a shed i have to get a shed which i have to get permits for and stuff like that to get the shed um but this way you know all the animal food is contained in that shed and we don't have to worry about like rodents or outside animals whatever getting it to it um that's like one of the things for usda but you have to have that to be open to the public yeah. okay when did you decide that you were going to build a zoo uh, when YouTube started doing very well and then we bought a house and then it was I've always wanted my own place because I've always worked in the zoo field um, and that's where I met my wife so working in the field you know you work with these incredible animals that they're not yours and that's that's the crappy thing it's like I put in uh, a year and a half with a hyena and I was one of the first people in the country to work hands-on with a hyena and this is before I was, you know, known on social media or anything. And, like, I have a couple pictures and videos with the hyena, but, like, there was no research to it. There was no anything to it. There was, I found, um, there was a town in Africa where people were training these hyenas on, like, chains and stuff. And then I found out later that it was actually a gang in Africa that was doing this. But other than that, there was nothing on it. Um, but I put literally a year and a half of my life into working with this hyena, and then one day I went to work and they're like, hey, you know, start start training her to go in a kennel. She's leaving. I'm like, what do you mean she's leaving? They're like, oh, she's going to another zoo. And I was like, wait, what? And like, so I was devastated because I was like, literally, this is a year. Like every morning, even on my off days, I was going into the zoo and spending time with her, working with her. So just having that fact that 
you don't own those animals, you have no control of what happens with them, kind of sucks. So I was like, I got tired of that. And I was like, I'd rather have my own place. So it's like, if I'm putting this time and effort into these animals, I don't have to worry about them ever leaving. So that's kind of where my idea of if I have my own zoo, I don't need to worry about that came from. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So wh when, when did you start actually building? Uh, we're in 2024 now. So I think I started about towards the end of 21. Was when okay. We moved in and I started, I had a lot of pre like prep work to do, uh, preparing the property because um, the people that were living in this house before we bought it were renting for eight years and people that rent tend to not take care of things like they would if they owned it. Um, so there was a lot of garbage. Um, there's actually a car thrown over the fence. Oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. a so, lot so of garbage. So if that, if that kind of helps explain it, um, yeah, there was, they threw, it was like an 87 Mustang. They threw it over the property line, over the wooden fence that was originally there and just covered it with a bunch of dead branches and stuff like that. Because I found the car hood first. And then I was walking the fence line and it's a five acre um, lot next to us that's just an overgrown forest. And yeah, I was just looking at the fence and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to put up a new fence. You know, I don't want, God forbid, animals getting out, going in there. Um, and I'm like, what is that? Like, there's something red under under stuff. So me and my wife hop the fence, we start moving the brush, and I'm like, this is a freaking car. Like, why is there a car here? And I'm like, it doesn't have a hood on it. And then I sent the picture of the hood to my friend, and he's like a Mustang junkie. Because I could tell it was a Mustang. And he's like, oh, that's an 87 Mustang. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And it's it's just, it's still there, because like, I have no method of getting that out. And like, what do I do with it when I do, you know? So, and I don't own that five acres, so. There was just so much garbage, and um, I didn't want to, but I had to take some some trees down as well. There was, like, the big pine trees and stuff like that, um, which, you know, we tried to recycle a lot of them. I turned some of them into, like, benches and stuff like that. Um, but they put up a fence through these trees and zigzagged the fence through the trees instead of going on the actual property line. So, like, the tree grew into the fence and stuff like that. So I had to take down some trees to put up the fence and whatever. It was it was a lot of work, but it took me about a year and a half of prep before I could actually start building enclosures. Um, but once I got to that stage, I'm like, all right, now we can start designing and figuring out what we're going to do. Like, do my, <laughs> my Selkata enclosure, I'm still not done with it, mind you, but I'm already... 15 grand into this Sulcata enclosure but I basically made it to where like during cold fronts during hurricanes I don't need to bring them in I can lock them into their night house and I don't have to worry about it like they have a solid concrete building night house that they can like live in for a couple days if need be um, but yeah I mean it's just stuff like that like I'm trying to go obviously we get hurricanes in Florida sometimes they're bad sometimes they're not but I just want to be prepared for like all cases if something bad were to happen I don't need to worry about the animals I just got to worry about my family at that point. So, yeah. Wow, this is quite the endeavor. When do you, when do you expect to be done? I wanted to be done last year. But, uh, yeah, then we had a son. And, and, and then that happened. And he uh, never thought a kid could live up to their name. We named him Wilder. Um, <laughs> you were asking for that, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never in a million years did I think a kid could live up to his name. But uh, it's a wild child. But, um yeah, I wanted to be open last year, but, you know, our son our son came along. Um, so hoping to maybe be open by the end of this year if I okay. get – I still have a few enclosures I want to get done um, before getting to that stage uh, just so that there is more, um, like, mammal enclosures done, I should say, because, you know, we do have a lot of mammals as well as reptiles. So, um, like, I would love to get the Fly River turtle – uh, enclosure done. I want to build like a, you know, what a lazy river is right. Mm -hmm. Like they have them in hotels and stuff. Sometimes I want to do like a mini version of that for a fly river turtle with an island in the middle that has like mangroves and stuff on it. That's a sandy island. So, God forbid if I ever get a female for my male, and I put them in there and they do breed, you know, I can kind of try to mimic what they have in the wild, um, ideally. And I would definitely love to get that done before opening to the public. But that's probably going to cost me a lot of money to, <laughs> to get that enclosure done. So. Uh, but like there's that one. Uh, we still have, still have one for the Patagonian Maras, which is the fifth largest road in the world. I want to get that one done, which is next on my list besides my monitor cage. So there's a lot to get done before. But once I get to like a threshold, I'm like, okay, I think we can open up to the public now. We'll, 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 like we'll have friends come over, YouTubers come over, and stuff like that who will film. But as for doing tours for the public, yeah, just not quite yet. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I'd I'd like to go. I mean. 
do you think there's going to be like a done like if you're done at the end of this year does that mean like you'll be done or is there like space to add more enclosures when you're done oh no yeah there'll be space for more more enclosures for sure um like i stopped taking in animals because obviously you know people people hit us up probably once a month for like a bigger animal to take in um or you know twice or three times a month for smaller stuff like i had a girl came over I want to say like two weeks ago, she dropped off like a crested gecko that she bought at a pet supermarket or, or one of the little, like pet shops, whatever. She was trying to save it because it looked rough and she brought it to us. She paid for this animal to then bring it to us. Um, but like I had to stop taking in animals because like I'm running out of space. Like I don't have enough stuff built yet to keep taking stuff in. Like we have three macaws right now that live on our our personal back patio. I built like this awesome perch, outside perch area for them so they can you know be outside with us. But again... We're outside all the time, so, you know, we're usually around our back patio, so the birds are always there with us. They kind of never try and fly off ever, so, yeah, we don't have to worry about stuff like that. But, like, I don't even have uh, an enclosure for the macaws on the zoo side of the property. They just kind of live with us. So, like, I would like to have at least one macaw cage so that they can, you know, be out there during a tour at least. Um, but just things like that. It's stuff. It's the list of stuff I got to get done, and it never ends when I have animals and kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I, I mean, hat. My hat is like, I'm. I'm literally gonna take it off to you. That's <laughs> that is insane that you're doing that endeavor with a 16th month old. Like, uh, wow. <laughs> like, what What do you do? So say some somebody who wants to do something like that, like. What advice would you give them? I mean, I have... So I've been working in the zoo industry my whole life. Um, my parents had exotic animals when I was a little kid. Um, I kind of fell out of it in my teen years for a little bit, but then, of course, fell back into it when I turned uh, 20. Um, so, like, I've, I've never... I've never got fired from a job. I always left once I feel I learned everything I could at a facility. So, like, you know, one facility I'd go and I'd learn, you know, animal husbandry, but also maintenance. So then I'd go to the next facility and have that on my resume. So then I'd learn even more maintenance plus different animal husbandry. So um, I've had, you know, years of experience just learning all this stuff. Um, I mean, for people that would want to open up their own place, like we, we went the nonprofit route. So... We were runoff donations. You know, everything I make on, on YouTube goes right back into the animals. Um, you know, I have other means of income that we use to support the family. So it's like a lot of the stuff that I have learned in the past is what I'm using now. Um, so, I mean, to, to get to where I am, if somebody wanted to do something similar to me, I mean, you have to get that experience, that life experience before wanting to. Because like, you can't just be like, oh... I own some ball pythons. I own bearded dragons. I want to open up a, a reptile zoo. Like, you don't know, like, the business side of it. Like, that I had to learn because I didn't know anything about business, you know? So I started, you know, doing all this research into business over the last couple of years, and it's, I'm still learning stuff. So um, it helps that my mother-in-law has a background in a business degree. So, like, she was able to teach me stuff. Um, so, like, yeah, it, it, it's just many years of experience that led me to this um, to where it's like where I can build my own enclosures. I don't have to hire a company to come do that. Like yeah, I'll hire friends to come help me on like the big concrete jobs and stuff like that. But for the most part, I can just do it myself. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's most people I wouldn't say would want to do what I'm doing just because of the amount of work and money it takes to do it. If yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Okay. It definitely <laughs> makes sense. A lot of sense. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of work, man. That's uh, I'm really would love to come and check it out once yeah. you get closer whenever, to being done dude, whenever you're ready come on i mean my, my wife has a she actually has a degree in um what is it called it's called a uh, zoo science and technology or something is her degree so she actually went to school to be a zookeeper and has a degree in it which i didn't know was a thing until i was at the job where i met my wife at the zoo uh, where we met um, yeah, I had no idea you could go to school to be a zookeeper. I thought it was something that kind of just happened. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, I get to the place where we met, which was called Lion Country Safari. It's actually right around the corner from us. It's an AZA zoo. And it was mostly women keepers, um, where it's like where I learned was all in the private industry. And it was all ma male keepers. So it was like going there and seeing all these female keepers. I was like, this is crazy. Like, I've never worked for AZA before. This is the first one. 
you know, and then when I met her, she started explaining. She's like, oh, yeah, we all went to school together at this, you know, school at first. It was at UF, but it was um, it was called Santa Fe. But they give you a degree for, I think it's two and a half years, and you get a degree to be a zookeeper, which is crazy to me. But, yeah. Yeah. So she's got, she's got a background in it, too, which also helps because she has – uh, um, a lot of the knowledge and like stuff that is required for USDA and to be like qualified to be AZA, which I'll never want to be because there's too many rules that come along with that. But um, you know, it all helps in the building process and the care of the animals and stuff like that. Yeah. So another piece of advice is like have a wife who's also trained. <laughs> have a wife that's awesome. Yeah. That, that huge plus, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's incredible, Will. Um, now I'm looking for. I wish you all the best of luck in completion on that thing. Thank man. you. And Thank you. Yeah, it's, that's that's it's, a big. It's a lot. That's a big deal. Yeah, that's a big deal. I mean, Kevin McCurley didn't get where he was in a day, so yeah, I know it took took many many years for that. I'm so. Heckle you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're standing there looking so pretty. So. <laughs> cool, man. Well, any, anything you want to say? Any, anything you want to announce before you get out of here? Uh, I mean, that's that's about it. Yeah. You know, I'll be here at the Vision booth all weekend. Um, this is my first Tinley show, which is, I'm already, like, I'm blown away with this and the amount of, like, so normally I do, you know, the fish shows. I do Aquashella um, and some of the reef shows and stuff like that because um, I've, I've started to, you know, again, explore. It, it's a different side of YouTube. You know, I, I branched out of reptiles, started getting into fish and, and other things. So I'm like meeting all these other YouTubers and stuff at these other shows. Um, and to see the difference in the communities is crazy to me. Um, so this is our first Tinley show. Um, and dude, I, I can't go to the bathroom without people stopping and taking a picture with me, which is crazy to me because like I'm not used to that. Like I do reptile shows in Florida and it's usually the same people, you know, where it's like, again, this is a huge show. You can't even go to the bathroom now because there's so many people here. So it's like being here is, for the first time is an awesome experience. And like I'm so excited to come back in October because I'm not looking forward to the cold, but yeah, because I'm already freezing my butt off. <laughs> <laughs> like I, stay inside. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I brought, dude, I had to go to the store. I had to go to Walmart two days before this trip to buy jeans because I don't own jeans. Yeah, and I'm very glad I did because. I don't want to go outside. Yeah, yeah. you did. I, I, so I've been here a number of times, and I was getting on the plane with this big old jacket. And I'm like having to take it off. I'm like, oh man, why am I bringing this? Yeah. And then I walked outside when we got here. It's like, oh yeah, that's why I brought this. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and it's so windy too. It's like, oh. <laughs> right when you said that, I saw this hair, girl's hair. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so windy outside. But no, it, it's it's an awesome show. I'm so glad to be here, and I'm excited for for what today's gonna bring for sure. So awesome. Man. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks for coming. Sit down with me, bro. Oh. It's great to see you, man. Off you too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that uh, information that Will had to pour out there. If you're looking to build your own zoo at some point, or if you have aspirations of that, leave a comment down below and let us know what your, your steps are to preparing for that, if that's you. Next week, we'll be having another awesome guest for you right here on Red Line Report, and we'll be doing that on a Tuesday, as we've always been doing. You can expect it every Tuesday right here. So we'll see you next week. Y'all take care. back home and it keeps tripping me out because i'm like i know it's not the right time every time i look at it yeah but this way i know what time it is back home right what time it is back home is more important than what time it is here yeah you have kids you yeah. know yeah. yeah you gotta yeah, exactly. know what the kids are up to yeah. what they're you, doing you got kids i got kids we know that it's very important to know what's going on back home yes uh f2.8 f2 okay good howdy folks brian cusco here at triple b oh my gosh not triple b <laughs>